Migrant workers' occupational safety and health propaganda. Course outline. First, safety and health duties. Two, occupational safety and health act overview. Three, emergency response. Four, occupational accident cases and hazard prevention. Five, conclusion. One, safety and health duties. Safety is my responsibility. Comply with safety and health work regulation. Obey supervisor's command. Undergo health check. Receive safety and health training. All injuries should be reported to the supervisor and seek first aid. If there are unsafe conditions, equipment and work methods, they should be reported as soon as possible. Assist new recruits to understand how to work safely. Perform various safety and health tasks. Maintain cleanliness of workplace and proper mechanical protection. Personal protective equipment should be worn. 2. Occupational Safety and Health Act Overview Definition of Occupational Hazard The legislative purpose of the Occupational Safety and Health Act is to prevent occupational accidents and protect workers' safety and health. Hazard Prevention and Control The triangle is a warning sign. Please avoid hazards during operations such as hot surface, rotating parts, High voltage, noise, corrosive, hazard prevention and control. The circle is a prohibition symbol. The action is prohibited, such as no climbing, no fire, no smoking, and no food and beverages. The blue background is an indicator symbol to remind you of things that should be done, such as wear safety helmets. Wear safety goggles, gas mask, dust mask, earplugs or earmuffs, protective gloves, protective shoes, and protective suit. When in use of chemicals, you must first understand these nine hazard pictograms. The exploding bomb means to avoid vibration, friction, knots, impact, at it electricity, open flames, and any source of heat. And for the flame over circle, it is an oxidizer and should not be placed together with combustible materials to avoid the risk of oxidation in case of fire. Keep away from open flames, static, electricity, and other source of ignition. The gas cylinder indicates gases under pressure. Be aware that high temperature may result in a significant increase in gas pressure inside the cylinder, which may explode. Corrosion. Inspect containers for signs of leakage or damage. Avoid contact with eyes and skin, which may cause burn. Skull and crossbone. Do not eat, drink, or smoke when using this product. Do not get them in your eyes on skin or on clothing. Do not breathe dust, fume, mist, vapors or spray. Health hazard. Prolonged exposure to these chemicals may cause allergy or asthma, cancer, damage to organs or damage to fertility. Exclamation mark. Although these chemicals are not toxic, they can cause certain health effects, for example, skin irritation, eye irritation, or skin sensitization. Environment. These chemicals should not be discharged into any water sources, such as sewers, drains, or lakes. This is a video about GHS. <coughs>
You should also check with the safety data sheet, which includes identification, hazard identification, physical and chemical properties, toxicological information, 
ecological information, stability and reactivity, exposure controls, personal protection, handling and storage, accidental release measures, disposal consideration, first aid measures, firefighting measures, transport information, regu regulatory information, composition information on ingredients. Handling hazardous chemicals. First, you must receive chemical related training. Second, read the label clearly. Third, check safety data sheet. Four, wear appropriate personal protective equipment. Five, follow the steps. For the health check, for general workers, you should undergo health, general health check. And for those who are engaged in operations that are particularly hazardous to health, they should undergo a special health check. For those who does not undergo health check in accordance with Article 46 of the Occupational Safety and Health Act, there will be a $3,000 fine. Workers must receive safety and health training arranged by the employers. For the new employee, there should be three hours of training. And for those who operate certain machinery or equipment, vehicle-based construction machinery, high-altitude operation vehicle, winches, working in oxygen-deficient environment, electric arc welding, there should be an extra three hours. And for those who manufacture or handle hazardous chemicals, there should also be a three hours. Workers must receive safety and health training arranged by the employers. Hazardous machine operators must be qualified in training or skill certification. And for those who had hazardous equipment operators, they should be qualified in training or skill certification. For general workers, they are required to undergo three hours every three years on the job training. For those who do not participate in safety and health training, there will be a $3,000 fine. Workers must comply with the company's safety and health rules. For those who does not follow the work rules, there will also be a $3,000 fine. Potential imminent danger at workplace. When laborers discover there is a concern of a threat of imminent danger while executing their duties, under conditions in which the safety of other workers is not jeopardized, they may terminate work of their own accord and withdraw to safe location and immediately report to their direct supervisors, such as the following eight situations. Occupational Accident Notification In the event of an accident, notify the on-site operations supervisor and take first aid measures. In the event of the following major occupational accidents, the site supervisor should be notified immediately and the site should not be moved or damaged except for necessary first aid and rescue, such as death or when the number of victims is more than three or the number of victims is more than one and hospital hospitalization is required. 3. Emergency response. How to use a fire extinguisher. In the initial small fire, use a fire extinguisher to extinguish the fire when it is not life-threatening. First is to pull, pin, aim, press and strap. In the fire hydrant, push the alarm, open the case, take the nozzle, pull the belt, switch the valve.
treatment for chemical exposure. The correct first aid step for chemical burns is remove contaminated clothing immediately to reduce the area of skin injury and contact time. 2. Rinse the wound in one direction with a large amount of flowing water and let the residual exit and alkali flow to the ground for at least 30 minutes. 3. Cover your body with clean clothes or bath towels when you go to the doctor. 4. Seek medical attention as soon as possible and inform the doctor the type of chemicals or provide with the chemicals and residual bottles for reference. Emergency treatment for chemical exposure. Exceptions that cannot be rinsed is potassium, sodium, lithium solution. Do not flush the line. Use a brush. If it is impossible to determine the type of chemicals at the moment, at least remove the contaminated clothing and call night and call 119 immediately. Second degree damage caused by incorrect flushing. Small amounts of flushing can cause chemicals to stain clothing, which in turn increases the amount of chemical contact with the skin. Emergency treatment for burn. Please follow the following steps when someone was burned. Rinse the wound with flowing water for 15 to 30 minutes. Apply cold compress if there is no flowing water. Carefully remove or cut open the clothing while in contact with water. Soak wound in cold water for 15 to 30 minutes. Carefully cover wound with clean cloth. Send to hospital for treatment as soon as possible. Emergency treatment for cut wound. Wash the wound with clean water or saline. Use clean gauze to apply direct pressure to the wound for 10 minutes and lift the injured part above the heart. Use betadine or antibacterial ointment to change dressing. Apply ice compress around the wound within 48 hours. Check wound healing. Emergency treatment for trauma. Apply ice immediately within 48 hours after injury. Change to hot compress after 48 hours. For puncture wound, apply direct pressure above the wound to stop bleeding. Do not remove the puncture by yourself. Seek medical attention as soon as possible. For amputation or avulsion, apply direct pressure to stop bleeding and wrap the severed end with saline gauze. Wrap the severed limb with saline gauze and put it in a clean plastic bag to keep it clean and in low temperature. Indicate the name of the victim and when the limb was severed and seek medical attention as soon as possible. Emergency response for electric shock. First is to cut off the power. Second, use insulating materials to remove the victim from the power source. Three, seek medical attention as soon as possible. Emergency treatment for heat stroke. Move to a shady place. Loosen clothes. Wipe body with water and fan. Provide diluted electrolyzed drink such as sponge drinks or cold water with some salt. Seek medical attention promptly. Emergency response for gas leak. Do not switch on or off the electrical appliances. Turn off the gas switch but do not touch the gas stove switch. Open the doors and windows gently. Maintain air circulation. Leave the scene and call the police for help. 4. Occupational accident cases and hazard prevention. 4. Hazard For the prevention, a footboard with appropriate strength and a width of more than 30 cm or installation of safety nets or barriers. Safety equipment are required for more than 1.5 meters and guardrails are required for places higher, higher than 2 meters.
and workers should always wear helmet and hook their safety belt. This is a video for Hazard. <laughs> Let's take a look at a common injury cause, falling, slipping, and dropping. Pay attention to these steps if you want to prevent falling, slipping, and dropping. Preventive measures while operating on scaffolds. 1. While operating on scaffolds. While operating on scaffolds, pay attention to facilities and measures that prevent falling, for example, cross rails, bars, stoppers, strut safety net, fall preventers, and main cables. Use safety devices for vertical movements. At working stations, check if objects may fall off from edges. Use levers, striped safety net, or supportive boards for tripods. Two, on roof. While working on roofs made of asbestos, iron, tiles, wood, thatch, or plastic, safety nets or treadles wider than 30 cm are required. When operating above 2 meters high, the use of scaffolds and working platform is required. Make sure that a main cable is connected and secured and belts are put on. When working at places with a gap wider than 1.5 meters, use safety devices for vertical movement. 3. On step ladders, the base of the ladders should be locked and attached with stabilizers and anti slips. 4. On edges, guardrails. Guardrails should be 90 cm above the ground, and the diameter of rails should be larger than 3. cm, and the rails should not be over 2.5 meter apart. The weight capacity of guardrails should be over 75 kilograms. Guardrails cannot shake or bend with the weight. Safety nets are required at the opening of the guardrails. Protective covers. Take effective measures to stop objects from slipping, falling, dropping, or moving, locked or attached. Safety net. When hanging safety net, the gap between the net and shelf wall cannot be over 75 pm. Beneath the safety net should be clear to prevent crushing. Safety cable. The capacity should be at least 2,300 kilograms. Helmet and safety belt. Before working, please wear and fasten your helmet and belt. Use safety belts whose material and strength pass national standards. Wear and fasten safety belt when working at height. The material and strength of the safety belt for operating at height should pass national standards. After this, I hope you have learned how to protect yourself from falls, rolling into machines, and stepping through fragile surfaces. Animation for working at height. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
for electric hazard. The maintenance of electrical equipment is operated by qualified personnel. Use mobile or portable electric tools in damp places with water or other highly conductive liquids, metal plates or steel frames and other places with good conductivity and set up leakage on the connection circuit of the electrical tools and equipment breaker wear insulating protective gear electricity safety advocacy when up unplugging the wire hold the plug to remove the extension cord should not be bundled when used and cannot be placed around high heat appliances such as stove avoid using multiple electrical devices for extension cords. Unplug the power plug and when electrical equipment is not in use. Do not use electric heaters to dry clothes or blankets. Electrical equipment prone to high heat shall not be placed around flammable materials. Video for electrical hazard. Now, let's take a look at a common injury cause, electric shock. Huh? Thank <laughs> you. 
Take these steps to prevent electric shock. Taking welding, for example, you should pay attention to the following points. 1. Before work, make sure power breakage is installed on shunt capacitor before using an electronic welder. The handling cables cannot be worn out. The power end and connecting cables cannot be exposed. The welder and all metal parts need to be on the ground. Devices that prevent shocks automatically need to function normally. Base material and the shelf need to be on the ground. Two, pay attention to these when welding. Wear safety masks, goggles, and protective gloves. Do not touch the metal part of the handle and welding bars. To pause welding or leave the welding station shortly, turn off the power and take off the welding bar from handle. Hang the bar before leaving. When welding, change all wet clothes or gloves. When working at an open space, stop welding immediately when it rains. Three, take these safety measures before welding. The handle of welder's need should stand electricity and heat proof. The end of welder and the connections between cables cannot be exposed and should be covered with an insulation cap, tube, or a protective board. Use specific cable for welders. If there is need to lengthen the cable, use specific extension. Four, education and training programs for laborers. Employers should give employees general security training and education. When employees are given different assignments, education and training on new tasks should be given. Employees should take training and education programs about operational hazards and security operations provided by employers. 5. Preventing electric shock when you're not welding. Turn off electronic devices, stop power supply, and lock the power switch before maintenance. Exposed connection is strictly disallowed. Wear insulated gloves when operating electronic machines. All tools should be insulated. After this, I hope you have learned how to protect yourself from electronic shock. for electric shock prevention. <laughs>
It is forbidden to wear gloves when working with rotary cutting tools such as drilling machines and angle cutters. Workers should receive related training. Post of obvious signs to remind workers not to wear gloves. Prevention for cutting and entrapment hazards. For computer numerical control machinery, equipment such as guards, Protective enclosures or safety doors with interlocking performance should be provided. Wear proper clothes and hat when there is a risk of getting caught in your hair or clothes. Operate in accordance with safe operation standards. Receive safety and health training. Do not remove the safety device. Operate in accordance with safe operation standards. When installing, disassembling, adjusting and trying out the mode, safety block, safety pin or safety switch keys should be used. The power must be cut off during maintenance. Animation for cutting and entrapment prevention. 應該還來得及調整吧。啊！要避免這樣的事故發生，我們可以這麼做：裝設雙手操作裝置，裝設緊急停止開關，裝設護罩，裝設光電感應裝置。作業流星每分秒，安全措施要做好。Prevention for collapse hazard. First. Necessary precautions such as rope binding, net protection, power blocking, height restriction or change of accumulation. Second, personnel irrelevant to the operation are prohibited from entering such places. Third, when the height difference of the work site is more than 2.5 meters, designated personnel should take safety measures. Animation for preventing collapse. You're going to be a good person. 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 You
，谢谢你，秀妈咪。劳心劳力拼家计，公安第一莫忘记。Mention phone confine space hazard. Notify others to supervise and assist. Ventilate to get rid of poisonous gases. Pass the ventilation effectiveness test to enter site. When an emergency occurs, do not enter for rescue without any protective equipment. Animation for working in confined space. 桶槽出槽清洗时，要如何保障自身安全呢？作业前先安装通风管，导入新鲜空气，再确认氧气浓度大于百分之十八，硫化氢、一氧化碳等有害气体浓度低于容许浓度标准。另外，监视人员要随时注意作业劳工，避免其发生缺氧或中毒。救援时千万要记得戴上输气管面罩，才能进行救援。劳动部职业安全卫生署提醒您 ：Prevention for chemical hazard. Check the safety data sheet. Label the chemical containers. Undergo regular chemical educational training. Keep the air flowing. Wear personal Protective equipment. Five conclusion. One, comply with work safety rules and standard operating procedure (SOP). Two, wear personal protective equipment. Three, receive safety and health training. Four, do not operate unauthorized machinery or equipment without permission. Five, do not drink alcoholic beverages at work. So in conclusion, we should remember these three keywords: guardianship, self-care, and mutual care. The end. Thank you.